Uh, I'm really looking forward to sharing this message today. Now, it is one that has challenged me, but also uh, encourages me as I've unpacked this and journeyed some of the concepts that I want to talk about today as well. Uh, Something that I want to do to start this message, it's not something I've ever done before, and I don't think I've really ever seen uh, a sermon do this before, but if you've spent any length of time on social media and in different groups, you might have heard of things called trigger warnings. Um, And I want to give a trigger warning to this message today. Uh, For those of you who don't know what a trigger warning is, it's basically uh, just notifying people that there may be something that triggers an emotional response, whether that be sadness, uh, anger, disappointment, uh, things like that. And so I want to give a trigger warning around uh, infertility, around disappointment, around hurt and shame, and of those times when we pray for something or we believe for something and it doesn't come to pass. So the main theme of today is one that's easy to speak of, but it's harder to live out. It's often misunderstood and I think uh, not interpreted correctly all the time, and that's contentment. Why do I think it's a bit misunderstood and misinterpreted? Because the reality of the word contentment makes people uncomfortable. And there's a difference between happiness and contentment. I've heard people say, oh, if you're content, you're happy. Uh, It goes a little bit beyond that, a little bit deeper than that. Happiness can come and go like that. One minute you're happy, one minute you're sad or you're angry because of different things that are going on. That sense and that feeling of contentment is a deep sense of peace regardless of what's going on around you. And I want to unpack that today because my message title is when things don't go the way you want. And so often when that happens, you're filled with anger or disappointment or hurt. You start questioning God, you start questioning yourself. But when we can come to that place of contentment, that place of peace and trust and surrender in in God, in who he is, who he says we are, and what he has in store for us, when we can come to that place, we can endure through the storms. We can endure through. We can persevere through not getting the things, the desires of our heart, the things that we really believe for and and want, whether it's a, a healing or a breakthrough, whatever it is. We can get through that if we can get ourselves to that place of contentment. And I think of Romans 8.28, which says, We know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. You know, I think the start of that verse is often thrown around a lot. You know, uh, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God. So we go, yes, I love God, so he's going to work everything together for good. But it's that last part that's the key part, according to his purpose. It doesn't say according to what we want or what we think we need, but it's according to his purpose. He sees our need. He sees where we're at. And so if we can come to that place of contentment in him and trusting in him, we see the good that comes through from his purpose shining through in our lives. And this flows with Pastor Rob's new series that he launched last week. You know, God is good and faithful to his promises and to his nature, not necessarily to what we want. That could be a, a tough pill to swallow sometimes. It is for me, uh, and it has been along the way, but, uh, you know, God is with us and God is good through the highs and the lows. So let me pray and we'll get into it. Father God, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you that you are faithful to us, that you are good to us, and that no matter what is going on in our lives, that you are present and that you love us and nothing can separate us from that and nothing can change that. And so I pray that you would speak through me today and that people would be encouraged through the difficulties of life when things don't go the way that we want, when things happen that we don't expect 
or that go against what we're believing for. I pray that you can bring us peace and help us get to that place of contentment. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I imagine that many, uh, if not all of us, have at some point put together a bucket list or some sort of list of things that we want to do in life. And, you know, a bucket list is a list of things that people want to do before they kick the bucket or before they pass on. And, you know, I've, I've got one at home. It's a bit ridiculous. I think there's nearly 600 things on there. Oh, I, I wrote it about 10 years ago and I reckon I've ticked off about four. Uh, and a lot of the things on there aren't because, um, you know, they're really profound and going to have a great impact for a lot of people. It's more, hey, that'd be a great story to tell. You know, the time I did this or the time I, you know, visited every continent or, you know, crazy things like that. They'd be great to do, but what's the motivation behind it? I think about where does God fit into that? And so I wonder what you're believing for. Does God fit into that? Or is it something that we're just charging ahead going, I, I'm believing for this, I want this, doesn't matter anything else that goes on, I want this, and then we get to a point that if it doesn't happen, we reject God, we're disappointed, we're disgruntled, we're jaded, and we push people and push God away because we've been so fixated on something that we haven't actually come to a place of peace, of trusting him, of recognising who he is and who we are in him. You know, what would happen if that thing you desperately desire just doesn't eventuate? How do you react to that breakthrough not coming? You know, what if you're, you or your friend or your family member, what if they don't get the thing that people are believing for? You know, these are tough questions and often I think we can shy away from them a little bit. These are uncomfortable. But sometimes we need to ask hard questions. Sometimes we need to have some difficult conversations. We need to wrestle with where we're at. You know, are we okay with that thing we're believing for not coming to pass? Can we manage in life? Without that, and I hope that through my message today, you can come to a place of seeing, you know what? If I don't get that, I'm going to be okay because of who God is and who he says that I am. You know, life won't always be easy or fun. And the Bible never says it will be. The reality is that sometimes we have to persevere, we have to endure, and sometimes... Suffering happens. It's something that we go through. And I know that that doesn't sound encouraging, but we need to realise that sometimes things don't go the way that we want. And so we need to come to that place of surrender. We need to find contentment. To find that con contentment in who we are in God and with the path that he has us on. And I think that one of the keys to this is intimacy with him and living from the reality of what Jesus achieved on the cross and that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit. And that is where our strength comes from, not in who we are and what we do, but our strength comes from him. Amen. We are children of God when things are good and when things are bad. So today I want to unpack in our time together two attitude battles on this journey towards contentment and being okay when things don't go the way we want. So the first attitude battle, impatience versus perseverance. You know, I think that sometimes we get the notion of provision wrong. We know that God is our provider and we expect him to just provide when we want, when we need. So I don't think we get what provision means wrong, but because he is our provider, we want it now. We live in a society where it's, okay, I can pick up my smartphone, I can order Uber Eats, I can jump on there and do online shopping. We're used to being able to do that now. And I think that we look at God a little bit in the same way. 
And so we have this battle of wanting things now and being impatient rather than learning that lesson of perseverance and the things that we learn through that. And now it's not bad to believe or expect God to provide. And, you know, sometimes we can lay hands on people and pray and we can see healing right on the spot like that. We can see deliverance. We can see those things happen straight away sometimes. But it's not every time. And sometimes it's not at all. And we need to be okay with that. We need to be able to persevere through that. It's our response that matters. If he doesn't provide the way that we want, when we want, or how we expect. There's a movie uh, called Cool Runnings. And it's based on a true story of the Jamaican bobsled team. And they were the first Jamaicans to actually attend the Winter Olympics. It was a bunch of sprinters who uh, had a bit of a fall in their sprint heat and uh, they were recruited to become the Jamaican bobsled team. And throughout the movie, you, you learn a bit about them and about their coach, who's a disgraced ex-bobsledder himself for, uh, for, for cheating throughout that. And he'd already won some gold medals. And one of the guys on the bobsled team asked his coach, you know, you already had so much success. Like, why did you have to do that? And he said that he, was, he just needed to keep winning. He was nothing without that. And I think that that can be us sometimes. We think that we need the newest gadget or, or a new car or we need this or that in order to be whole. But the reality is, if we're not enough without it, we won't be enough with it. That doesn't change. And I know what it's like to think that if I just had that job or that car or that house or that extra bit of money, things would be different. Maybe it's we need that particular boy or girl to, to love us. And you know, sometimes we seek a quick fix of provision rather than being willing to persevere and trust God. You know, that craving that you might have for, for cake or for donuts, you can persevere through that. You don't need to go and, and get that and uh, overindulge. And I'm guilty of that many times. But sometimes the lesson is in the perseverance. If we continually seek a quick fix of provision, nothing will ever be enough. Not even God. So what does it look like to have an attitude of perseverance? Well, I want to look at a, a scripture here uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse seven, verses 7 to 9. And this is the Apostle Paul writing. Therefore, so that I would not exalt myself, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to torment me, so that I would not exalt myself. Concerning this, I pleaded with the Lord three times that it would leave me. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is perfected in weakness. Therefore, I will most gladly boast all the more about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may reside in me. This is one of my favourite scriptures. Why? Because it reminds me that without God, I am weak. You know, I may have the, the privilege of many things. I'm married to an amazing woman. I live in a pretty great country in Australia. I get to call this amazing church home. And I'm aware that there is privilege that I have. But I'm also aware that I am weak. And that's a, that's a tough pill to swallow sometimes. For many of us, you know, we think we are, we are strong. We might be strong-willed and all of these things, but, you know, in and of ourselves, we are weak to combat the schemes of the enemy, to combat trials and tribulations and temptations in our lives. I'm human. We're human. And the flesh is sinful. And so without God, I am weak. Without God, we are weak. Without his grace, we are weak. And my gifts, my abilities, your gifts and your abilities, they all come from him. He equips us. And for me personally, he gives me the ability to forgive 
to not hold a grudge, to love people. That's his spirit in me. And I haven't mastered singing in tune, but maybe that thorn, maybe it's going to have to remain a little bit longer and, you know, you're never going to actually see me lead worship or anything like that. But when we are weak, he is strong in us and it's still a joyful sound of some sort when I sing. We need to embrace this though, church. We need to embrace the fact that we are weak and it's okay. It's, it's not uh, meant to be a criticism or something negative because in him, we are strong. When he is in us and we are allowing him into our lives and into who we are and into every facet of what we do, then we become strong. Then we can endure and persevere and overcome. When things are going well, it's not because of us. When things aren't going well, it's not always because of us, but it can be. But it is his strength and it is his love that sustains us. Think about a story in Daniel chapter 3 with Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. If it's a bit easier to remember, your shack, my shack and a bungalow. And they had a king called Nebuchadnezzar who'd built this monstrosity, this massive statue of himself, and was telling all the people that they had to bow before his statue. And these three guys said, no, nah, we're not going to do that. You're not our God. We're going to worship our God. And if you know the story, they were thrown into a furnace. And when they opened the door of the furnace to, to look in to see if they'd been burnt or anything at that point, they could see a fourth person in there. These boys were, were true to who they were in God. They were true to their God and he enabled them to persevere through a pretty traumatic experience. They survived because they didn't compromise themselves for a quick fix. They persevered. And through this story we see the goodness of God in the lives of his people as they persevere through hardship. We see God's glory manifest in their lives. And we need to remember, church, that his grace is sufficient for us. Whatever storm we are going through, whatever difficulty that we are in where we can't wrap our head around, that we don't understand why God's not answering our prayer, why God's not providing the breakthrough or the healing or whatever it is that we, we so desperately desire or crave, his grace is sufficient. He gives us what we need to stay afloat. If we all got what we want, when we wanted, the world would be chaos. And there's a, a scene in the movie Bruce Almighty, and uh, so Bruce, played by Jim Carrey, says that he can do a better job than God, so God passes over his powers to, to Jim Carrey's character and uh, he gets tired of having to deal with multitudes and multitudes of, of prayer and he sets it up as an email and he goes, right, reply all, yes. So everyone, everywhere, automatically gets what they want, when they want, and it's chaotic. You know, people praying to, to win Tats Lotto, instead of winning multiple millions of dollars, they all win 20 bucks. You've got multiple people wanting this or that or something to go on sale. And all of a sudden, it's just, it's chaos. There's riots. Everything goes wrong because everybody got what they wanted when they wanted. And so the key is perseverance. Just because we don't get what we want when we want it doesn't mean that we're not going to get it. We may not. But what God has for us is going to be better than anything we could have wanted for ourselves. Trusting God will give us what we need. And if we think about 2 Corinthians 12 again for a moment, his grace is sufficient. What if his grace is all we received? Would that be sufficient? With the mere fact of our, our sin being forgiven and washed away, allowing us into eternity with the King of Kings, if that was all the provision or blessing, 
that we ever received, would that be enough? And I think that that comes to the heart of contentment. If we can get to a place answering that question that, you know what, God, the fact that you sent your son to die on a cross for me, bringing me back to you, to your eternal kingdom, I'm good with that. And that's the point that I think that we need to get to. And we do that, like I've said before, through intimacy with God and understanding that. If we can fully appreciate that gift of grace and let it sink in, to know it, to truly know it, we can stand strong against the storms and the temptations of the world. You know, maybe you're thinking, what does a 31-year-old know about that? I know a few things about what it's like to not get the things that you want, to suffer hardships and trauma and things like that. You know, a couple of years ago, my parents separated and they've now divorced. And for many, lots of people have experienced that and grown up with it. But my childhood, I went to seven different schools. I lived in a double figure amount of different houses. Um, And within my home life, the one thing that was constant was my parents' marriage. And when that broke down, that rocked me. It took me a while to actually process that and it came back to having to actually just trust God and go, you know what, I can't fix that. I like to try and fix things, but I can't fix that. God, you know, you're in control and I've got to give my emotions to him and their relationship to him and my relationship with both of them to him. His grace is sufficient. You know, I would have thought by the time I was 31, I'd own my own house and I'd be a dad. I haven't seen either of those. But his grace is sufficient. Whatever is going on in my life or in your life, know that God is sovereign and he is good. So it's important for us to know God and know his promises. And not only that, as a community, we need to build each other up, and not tear each other down. We need to be lifting up each other's arms and encouraging one another, supporting one another. We are created for community and doing this journey together. Let's support each other. Have you ever heard someone say, you just need more faith and then it'll happen? Or if you get that sin out of your life, it'll happen. Those statements are simply not true in God and they're not helpful. Instead, let's empathise with people. Let's walk with one another, support each other through whatever it is that we are dealing with. And if you're struggling, I encourage you to reach out to people and I guarantee that you are not alone. Talk to God even in your pain. He's a big God and he can take it. And this doesn't mean that we stop believing for things, but we we find peace in our lives and in our situation because we know that God's grace is sufficient. And part of perseverance, in my opinion, is being comfortable with being uncomfortable. You know, unfortunately, we are creatures of comfort. I have an armchair at home and that's my chair. We've got a massive couch that Em and I and the two cats could quite easily all lounge on and be fine, but no, I've got my armchair. A bit like Sheldon Cooper on the Big Bang Theory, it's his seat on his couch. I have my armchair, affectionately known as the, the throne of knowledge and wisdom. But I'm comfortable in my armchair. We all have the things where we are comfortable. Some of them are weird, like I love being cold and even in winter I sleep with a fan on. Yep, Emma has to deal with some rather unique eccentricities that I have. But whatever it is that makes us comfortable, chocolate, dogs, morning coffees, afternoon coffees, nighttime coffees, whenever it is, TV, food, alone time. These are all okay until these things get in the way of what God is speaking to us and what he wants to do in and through us. Often what God is calling us to pushes us outside of our comfort zone. And so that requires perseverance. You know, sometimes we may be feeling disappointed about a lack of provision. 
jealousy because it has happened for someone else. We're hurt by people who say the wrong thing or by events that have happened. We may be feeling shame because we feel like we have failed at life because of X, Y, and Z. The reality is God loves you, me, all of us, regardless of X, Y, and Z. And his grace is sufficient for us. So if we can forego the need for comfort above all else and let God in, we will find what we need to endure and persevere. We can't always get what we want, but sometimes we get what we need. But that only comes through perseverance. So finally, attitude battle number two, invincibility versus contentment. Sometimes I think we take on board God saying to Joshua, be strong and courageous and run with it to the extreme. We think that being strong and courageous means being amazing all the time, being invulnerable and doing things our way with force. Yes, there are things we do well, but that can't get in the way of following God and loving people. You know, if you've ever played Mario Kart, uh, one of the items that you can win is this uh, power of invincibility. You can go really fast, just crash into anything and knock them off the track and everything. And I think that sometimes we think in and of ourselves that we are invincible, invulnerable. I'm guilty of that. Sometimes we have this perception of invincibility, that because we have God, nothing will shake us. Now, to a degree, his strength will allow us to endure and persevere. But it's in his strength. We may think we are strong in him, but we sometimes need to acknowledge that we aren't. So we need to spend that time investing in our relationship with God to have that be strong and to have his spirit be strong in us. That allows us to persevere. That allows us to find contentment that when things don't go the way we want, we aren't rocked to the core by that. You know, uh, Judas lost his way. He thought Jesus would be this all-conquering king. And Jesus was just not how Judas imagined. And when our perception is flawed, we lose sight of God, who he is and who we are. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 to 13, there are some amazing truths. You know, we, we get to see who, uh, who Jesus is. You know, Paul starts off saying, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is excellent, whatever is praiseworthy, and a a number of other things. And we look at that and go, okay, think about Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Let us know him. And then he goes on to verse 13. And he culminates this little section with this verse. And I think it is a really well-known verse, but often a misunderstood and misinterpreted verse. And that's that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I think people wear this as a badge of invincibility. I can do what I want. I can take crazy risks. I can do whatever because I've got Jesus with me. The thing is, that verse isn't about us. It's about focusing on Jesus. And the true power of this comes from contentment. Verse 13 isn't saying we are invincible, rather that our strength to live life and endure and persevere comes from our union and relationship with Jesus. The more we know him, the greater depth that we have in our relationship with him, the stronger our sense of contentment is. And that is the secret of contentment, church. It's not invincibility, but relationship with God. Remember that God says, my grace is sufficient for you. So as a result, I read Philippians 4.13 as this. I can overcome. I can endure. I can persevere. I can forgive. I can love. I can suffer. I can let go of what I have. I can step up. I can pick up my mat and walk. I can survive the furnace and the lion's den. I can take up my cross. 
I can be uncomfortable. I am okay and I can be content because I have a deep-rooted, intimate relationship with Jesus. And through this, he gives me strength to survive whatever comes my way in life. That's what I believe Philippians 4.13 is saying. And this hasn't been a short journey to get here. You've heard me talk before about Em and I desiring to be parents. We firmly believe that it can happen, but I've had to come to a place of contentment that it may not. As a 31-year-old, that's hard. I've questioned whether it hasn't happened because I'd be a bad dad. And so God is protecting our kids. I've wrestled with feelings of inferiority to others because they've been blessed with kids and we haven't. But these are lies of the enemy. And through that, I've come to realise that things don't always go the way that I want them to. And that's okay. Because God is still God and he is most certainly good. So I've asked Em to be here today to share her story around this briefly. So Em. Thanks. Thanks, Jim, for inviting me to come today um, and to share my story with you. Um, Like Jim's explained, it has been a long journey for us and it's probably been a longer journey for me even because from the age of about 26, the doctors were telling me that I was going to find it difficult to conceive a child. Um, And one of the things that I've always believed that God had spoken to me was about being a mum. So as you can understand, that roller coaster has been very much a part of my life. But one of the things I think that God has really shown me is how to wait. Um, Not only am I waiting now for children, but I also waited for Jim. (laughs) Um, We met when I was 35, so I waited a while for him. As a, a young teenager, I believed that I'd get married really early and all of those things. And then I waited and I probably didn't wait very well. But what God's shown me is that it's in the waiting that he does his work. And one of the things that I think Jim and I are both discovering in this time is that he is good and he is faithful and he has never let us down. And so regardless of the situation, regardless of what the doctors say, God is faithful. And you know what? We believe that he has promised us children. But I believe in our promise keeper more than I believe in the promise. Not because I think that he can't do it, but because he is faithful. God is the one that is faithful to us, not the other way around, really. It's the in-between part of the the promise and the desire that we have and the fulfilment. It's that in-between part that we need to actually reconcile with God. We need to allow that journey to be part of our story because that's where he is able to do his most amazing work. Faith and doubt go hand in hand. I'm certainly not beyond doubting. There are moments where I, I crumble at the thought that I'll never be a mum and that we'll never have children. But again, God is faithful. One of the things that I believe at the moment and that God is speaking so clearly to my heart is that he holds our future. He holds my future and he holds your future. And regardless of what's happening around us, he knows the plans that he has set for us. And there's a scripture in Psalms that says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And I think about that for a minute and I think, you know what, the desires of my heart are one thing, but my job in that whole picture is that I need to delight myself in him. And so if I can encourage you with anything today and if anything um, stands out in what I've shared today, let it be to delight yourself in the Lord because it's in those moments, in that relationship with him that you will find your comfort, your peace and your contentment. So thanks, Jim, for asking me to come and share. Why don't you come back and finish your sermon? Thanks, Em, and thank you for sharing your heart around this. You're welcome. I think that there's some great truth in what Em said and that it really resonates with with what I've been trying to communicate today about delighting in in the Lord and allowing him to be our source of contentment. 
And it can be hard sometimes to find that peace and that contentment. In life, there are many highs and lows, times of joy, times of sorrow, times of happiness, times of disappointment. Through it all though, God still reigns. He is our King. And as I shared earlier in Romans 8, 28, God works all things together for the good of those who love Him according to His purpose. And I find peace at the fact that God is in control and that He makes us whole. And so we need to allow ourselves the opportunity to experience and live with the power of contentment. When we know God, when we know His heart, when we know who He says we are, we start to be able to endure through the storms of life. We can put one foot in front of the other and walk ahead because we know we have Him with us. His grace is sufficient, church. His power is made perfect in weakness. His sacrificial death for us gives us strength. And we can endure when things don't go our way because His grace is sufficient. Let's pray. Father God, we thank You that Your grace is sufficient for each and every one of us. And perhaps there's people watching today who don't know you, don't have a relationship with you. I pray that you would speak to them and let them know your love. And if that's you, there's a link that you can click on. But I want you to just give yourself to Jesus right now and just say, Lord, come into my heart. I love you. I repent and turn from doing things my way. And so today I want you, Jesus, to come into my life and start to transform me in your likeness. Thank you for your saving grace. And for everyone else, I just want to spend a moment here where you can come before God and just release some of that disappointment, that pain, that anger, the grief, the sense of unworthiness, feeling bitter or jaded because you've been on this journey and believing for something or praying for something and you haven't seen it come to pass. Just come before God and just let Him lift that burden from you. Help Him to help you find that place of contentment. Lord, I just pray for everyone who's tuning in today. Allow your love and your grace to strengthen each and every one of us. Allow us to find that place of peace and contentment. Help us to know who you are, to know who we are in you, And to know that as we walk with you, we can endure and we can overcome. Help us to leave all the hurt and the shame and all the bad stuff in our lives at the foot of the cross and find our contentment in walking with you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.